family. I'm Rachel Vassell, Assistant Vice President of the Office of Multicultural Advancement at Syracuse, and we have something fantastic in store for you today. Our amazing alumna, Chef Josette Josie Burgos, is going to share her secret tips for an authentic Puerto Rican pepper steak with onions dish that will surely take your cooking skills to the next level. Get ready for Lockdown Cooking, the last of our May CBT Virtual Connection Series events. A native of the Bronx, Josette has resided in Syracuse for the past 17 years. She received both her bachelor's degree in 2009 and an MBA in 2017 from SU. Once she obtained her degrees, she used her knowledge and love for cooking to start her own business. In 2014, she established her catering company, Elvitas Cochina, named after her mother and grandmother. As her business continued to grow, she added additional services, including a food truck, which can be seen at various local Syracuse festivals and events. As a thank you to Chef Josie, please give to her favorite Our Time Has Come fund, the Lansu Fund, or any of the over 50 Our Time Has Come scholarships. We appreciate your ongoing support of our students, especially during this time, and remember that no amount is too small. So with no further ado, I present Chef Josette Josie Burgos. Enjoy. and some ajo sauce to go along with this book. So I hope everyone was able to get all the ingredients. And um, one of the things that I do want to make sure is that we have this interactive. So we're going to have our chat available. So if there's any questions that you have, please feel free to put it in the chat. And I will be more than happy to answer those questions for you. And um, if there is um, anything that you don't understand, uh, please feel free to also uh, chime in and ask that as well. Um, so we're just going to go ahead and get started. Um, if you see here, I have all of our ingredients and everything that we're going to be using for the afternoon. Um, so we're just going to get right to it. Okay. So of course, um, one of the things that I did was I made sure that I prepped everything ahead of time because whenever you're prepping, that is the one thing that takes the most time to do. And one of the things that I like to do when I cook is I want to make sure that I'm timing everything as perfectly as I can, especially when you're making meat and then you're making rice. You want to make sure that you're timing it so that when you're ready to eat, you're ready to eat and everything is ready at the same time. So I'm going to try and do that as much as possible. So this will probably take about an hour for all of us to do from beginning to end. So of course, in between, 
I'll be talking to you. I'll be answering any of your questions. So let's get right to it. Okay, so what I'm going to start with is, of course, is our space. So I have our space right here, and I already have it all nice and cut up and put um, our slices, just like in our, um, our recipe. So this is one and a half pounds of the, um, of the chuck roast. The reason why I chose this type of meat is because it does get very tender as you cook it, especially in the stew, I mean, in, in, in this type of recipe. Um, so I have this. And what I also did was I chopped, I sliced up all of our um, onions and peppers as well. One of the things that I was trying to find were the yellow peppers and I couldn't find them for some odd reason. So what I did was I just used one whole red pepper and one whole green pepper. And then of course the one medium onion. So I have all of that all sliced up and ready to go. Do we have any questions so far or are we good? Yes, okay. All right. So what we're gonna do is I am going to mix the green peppers and the onions together with the, um, with the meat. I'm gonna put it all together. And the reason why that I started off this way is because once we start to season everything, the vegetables, everything is going to take on that flavor as well, okay? So one of the things that, um, that I like to do is once I get all of this all nice and um, mixed up together, we're going to put it aside and we're going to let it just marinate for a little bit. All right. So what we're going to start is with our sofrito. This is homemade sofrito. I make this by the gallon all the time. And pretty much what sofrito is, it's cilantro. It is um, red and green bell pepper, onion, and garlic cloves. I put it in the food processor and you just blend it and then you get this wonderful thing. I use this for all kinds of different um, bases for our food. You could put it in, um, in stews, everything. And I'm pretty much, this is what we use to cook for everything. So we're going to use about two tablespoons of this, keeping spoons, of course, because we want good flavor. So I do that. You know, I'm going to talk, yeah. okay. So I have that. I'm going to now. I know I put in the recipe, um, you know, a tablespoon of this, a tablespoon of that. Me, I'm really old school because, of course, I learned from my mom and my grandmother, so I pretty much just eyeball everything. But it pretty much is about two tablespoons and stuff, so we're just going to go with that. Okay, so this is the adobo, all right? Now, this is the marinade that I um, mentioned in the recipe. This is the mojo marinade. I use this as well, and that also gives an additional flavor to, um, to your food. All okay. right? Then, of course, you can't go wrong with sazon, so I use sazon on this as well. What you're doing is just pretty much just adding all of your um, your seasoning into everything. Now, the reason why I have my gloves on right now is because you're going to go hands in and you're going to start to um, marinate everything and mix everything together with your hands. You're better off doing that so that you can get in there and get all of those seasonings all over everything. Okay? So other thing is we're going to add some flour. The flour, of course, this is what's also going to help to create that sauce. So when you add some of the flour in here, it will um, help thicken that sauce, okay? So about two tablespoons of that as well. Hey, Cedric, I see you. <laughs> All right. Okay, so now we're going to go in, we're going to mix everything together. All right. Just get in there. Does everybody see how I'm doing this? Yeah? Okay, good. Yeah. 
So you see how everything starts to blend together and mix together really well? That's how you know that you got into everything. So that's pretty much what we're going to do. All right. Okay, so that looks really good. So we're just going to um, put this to the side now. And then what I'm going to do now is we're going to just let this sit for a little bit. And what we're going to start now to put together is our rice. Because the rice is going to take just as long to cook as this meat. We want to cook it all together at pretty much the same time. So like I said, we are ready to eat. Everything's ready. Boom. Everybody's happy. All right, so now we're going to focus over here to um, my big caldero. Now, of course, there's different sizes of calderos that you can use. Um, and since we are going to be doing, now, oh, let me just give you a disclaimer here, I'm sorry. Where are my food trucks? <laughs> and the reason why they're wearing my food truck is because it is much easier for me to maneuver through everything. Now, um, typically this is not what you would have in your kitchen, but I'm gonna try and make sure that I um, adjust everything accordingly so everything comes out the same. So um, this is a medium sized caldero. I'm going to use this um, to make our rice, uh, <laughs> since this is, um, this is a propane burner, I have to use this. If not, my rice will really cook really too fast. So I have to keep it a little bit uh, high and off the point. So you're gonna put your flame on medium, medium heat. And you're gonna let your, um, you're gonna let your, your pan get hot, okay? And you know, rinse your pot out, and then when you see that there's no more water, no the water has been um, evaporated, then you know that you're good to go. Now, one of the things that I did say was azote oil. Now, azote oil is made with anaco seeds. I'm gonna show you what anaco seeds are. But typically, you just use whatever cooking oil you use, and um, you put some anaco seeds in the sauce pan, and you can um, you can use that to make your azote oil. I know I have anaco seeds in here. I have pretty much everything. But anyway, oh, I see the sign there. Sorry, guys. But yeah, so this is made with anaco seeds. I'm sorry about that. So okay, so of course my oil is. I mean, my pan is pretty much ready. So I am going to add about two tablespoons of this oil into the pan. Okay, I'm gonna get that, let that get a little bit hot there. All right, and then you're gonna also get your sofrito. I don't know why I closed it back up. I'm used to closing everything else. All right. Now, I'm Puerto Rican, so I use a lot of sofrito for everything. That's why I say I make it by the gallon. But pretty much this is about maybe about two tablespoons. Okay, of sofrito. You're gonna put that in there. Then you're also going to grab your tomato sauce. Add half a can of this tomato, a little bit of this tomato sauce in here as well. Mixing that all up. And my cameraman is my better half, Walwyn. <laughs> so he's here helping me out. These are the salad olives, the manzanilla olives. You use these as well for um, some seasoning. And then what you're also going to do is you're going to take your gandules. I use the water and everything, so I just throw this in here as well. I'm just gonna let that cook out for a minute. Okay. So as you let this cook out for a minute, this is when I'm also gonna start to add the, um, the, uh, the adobo and also the sazon. And, um, and you know, and just give it um, some more flavor. You use two packets of 
the um, sazon with achote. And of course, I know we use the achote oil, but this also gives it gives your rice a nice deeper red color. Wondering if we have any questions. I don't know if I am maybe going too fast. I'm hoping I'm not. Um, adobo. Okay. Now at this point, what you want is that you're going to um, mix all of this up together. And then you're going to um, do a little taste. The reason why you want to taste it is because you want to make sure that it doesn't have, it's not too salty, it doesn't lack, it lack, it doesn't lack flavor. If you like how it tastes, then you're good to go. If you think you want to add a little bit more adobo, go right ahead. But remember, we're going to be adding some water to this. So, uh, you know, if you want it to be a little bit on the salty side, but not too salty. Okay. All right. So this is pretty much good. So now what I'm going to do is I have three cups of already washed um, rice. Now, for rice, it depends on how many people you're gonna feed. One cup of cooked rice, I mean, sorry, one cup of uncooked rice can feed up to three people. So um, I just went ahead and I just did three cups. Um, because of course, um, you know, I'm sure somebody's gonna come by and want some food and, uh, you know, I like to feed people. That's why I'm in this business. <laughs> so add, all your washed rice into the pot. You're going to mix everything really well. Okay, mix it all well so that all the rice and the and the beans are all incorporated and mixed very well together. Okay, at this point you want to turn your flame down a little bit. Okay, and then at this point, once everything is mixed in. You're going to add your water. Now your water is, um, the ratio is one to one. So if you have one cup of rice, is one cup of water, okay? So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to go grab some water. You may want to just focus on the pot. <laughs> We're going to add our water in here. Okay, and you know what it's enough because it's going to be right over the top of the uh, right over the top of the of where your rice uh, line is. So, this is perfect. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to start, we're going to let this, we're going to let this cook down, okay, over medium heat. And we're going to let that water start to evaporate. Okay? So we're pretty much good with this right now. All right? So now this is when we start with our meat. Sorry, I got to move around because I'm going to pull up here. Okay. I have my pan already nice and washed off. And we're going to now start with our meat. Our meat has been marinating for a few minutes, which is perfect. I don't like. I don't like dirty fish. Okay, that's fine. Okay, so now we have our meat is all nice and marinated. We are going to take this to the pan, and we're going to start to build this all together. Okay. Questions so far? We're good. Yeah. Okay. So I see that my water is starting to evaporate out of my pan, so that means that is nice and uh, is nice and hot. So I'm going to add my meat. Okay. 
So the one thing that I like to do is I like to add some water onto here, which is that um, that cup of water that I referred to in the recipe. So you can add it onto here to get all these nice um, seasonings out of that. So we're going to do that and we're going to add that to the pan. Now, what we're also going to um, do is add we're gonna add some olives. About two tablespoons of these going here. Okay. Start to mix this all together. because I wasn't really sure what to make. I wanted to make something that was going to be like um, typically Puerto Rican. So of course, you could, uh, I, want, I definitely had to do the adobo con gandules and totones. But then I wasn't sure what meat, but I wanted something that was going to go well and cook around the same time. And this was the perfect thing for me to do. So that's why I opted to do this. Okay, so we got all that together. We're gonna add a little bit of tomato sauce as well. All right, and then we're going to mix this all up and over medium heat, you're going to let this cook out. Okay, and like I said, since this cut of meat, this meat will come out very heavy. So, as you notice, you see how you already have this nice gravy that's developing. So we're going to cover this. And we're going to let this cook down. And as you can see, our rice is already starting to evaporate a little bit. So what we're going to do is we're going to let this evaporate a little bit more. And then what we're going to do is cover it and then let it cook. All right, I'm, I'm, I'm surprised nobody has any questions so far. What's going on? Is Cookie here? I don't see her. Where are you, where are you Cookie? You're not on video? Oh, there you I'm are. Here. Hey. Hi, how you doing? Good, sweetie. Good to see you. Good, good, good to see you. How am I doing? Am I doing okay? Am I doing a well? I'm cooking. Huh? <laughs> All right. I think I need to uh, fix that a little bit. Okay, so now that we have all of this stuff cooking, I want to, um, the two things that we have to do, we have to get the totones, um, the green plantain threading, and then we also have to make our garlic um, um, dough. Things will, um, the plantains, if no one knows, there's two that, you know, you have the green plantains, which are these. These you um, cook twice. So you cook them, then flatten them out, um, and then you fry them twice. And then these are the sweet plantains. These are perfect. They're ready to go. You just fry these once, and, um, and it's a nice sweet um, uh, taste. So that's, um, that's the difference between the two. What we're going to do is, we're going to do the totone. Um, so I'm going to show you how to do that as well. What I should start off with is the, I mean, peel the totone. I'm going to have to wash this off. Give me one second. Sorry. Okay. Okay. So 
sorry, my little dog got escaped from our backyard somehow. So, yeah. anyway. so I'm gonna be cut. Okay, yeah. So I'm gonna be cutting the sotone, and the way that you peel it is that you cut off the end, and then you um, slice down the body of it, and just make sure that you don't cut into the meat because then it'll be difficult to peel it off. And then what you want to do is just you very carefully use the end of your knife and then start peeling it off. And you just uh, continue to do that. And you should be able, if it's really green, it'll um, give you a little bit of a hard time with different ends. Most are easy. Little question. Oh, yeah. Uh, no, and I get. Can't get the screen again. Sorry, Angela, we missed that. Oh, here it is. There it is. Easy way to peel, yes. Tell me about it. <laughs> um, this one is like really hard to peel today. I don't know so hard. All right, but I'm getting it. See, I'm getting it. Of course, I'm not going to get every part of it, so we got it on. Use your knife. Take off some of the excess off of there. Okay. And then what you do is you're going to cut them in an angle. Why we cut them in an angle, I'm not sure, but when you flatten them, it actually um, makes it easier for you to flatten. Ah, hot, really hot water. I didn't know hot water. Okay. Oh. I learned like for green bananas, you put them in the put them in the microwave. They said I like, to put it in the microwave for like twenty seconds and it'll make it easy for you to um, do it. Uh, but I didn't know about the thing. Okay, so in the meantime, let's check on our meat and our rice. So our rice is now up to a boil. See that? Hi, Mom. <laughs> this is a little bit out of angle. I have to stick that to figure out how to fix it. But, um, yep, so now this is all coming down to a boil. So now this is the time where we're going to cover it and we're going to just let it do its magic. Okay? <laughs> so we got that covered. Let's check on. All right. Ooh, look at this. Yeah, I'm going to turn it down a little bit. So, as you can see, this is cooking up very nicely. Where? Oh. Okay. Thank you, thank you. Oh yeah, it's Yeah. Oh, nice to All see right. that Angela's so on. This is looking here really too. good. Huh? I see that Angela's on here too. Ooh, that pepper steak looks right. delicious. Thank you, thank you. Okay, so we're just gonna continue to let this cook down. Of course, um, you know, you wanna make sure that this is not too high, so you want it down at medium at, um, at most. Now for the sotones, you wanna make sure that oil, your oil is at 350 degrees. I have a fryer, but what you could do is you can use a pan 
or you know just a, a small pot if you have a, um, a thermometer um just get it to temperature until it gets to 350 350 is always the best temperature to fry um because then it won't take too long you don't want your food sitting in um in oil um you want you want your oil nice and hot and ready for you, not the other way around. Because if not, then that's what makes you free. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to check my oil temp. I'm checking the oil temp. And yeah, I'm at 375. Yeah, I'm pretty good. Uh, it's getting close to 400. Pretty good. So, um, I could take it down a little bit. Yeah, because yeah, what you don't want it is, is it to be too hot, and then it'll fry up nicely on the outside, and then it'll be warm on the inside. So that's why that 350 is the perfect temp to be at. All right, I got to turn this down. Yeah. Right. Okay. So yeah. So I I this side is off. Okay. All right. So I'm going to find my foot on it. While we're waiting for that to fry up, we are going to make the sauce for, let's start to make our sauce for our sauce. It's a garlic sauce. Um, this is a pilong. This came from my from my aunt who lives in Houston, Texas. Uh, yeah, it's a staple. You use it like a mortar and pestle. Um, we have one that's marble. But this one is really good um, to use for um, uh, to match up um, garlic. So what we're going to use for this is we have um, our black pepper corn. We're only going to use about three three of these. Okay, we're going to use one whole one whole bulb of garlic. Okay, I'm going to use all this garlic. A bulb is probably about eight cloves, and then we have our chopped up cilantro and some rice wine vinegar and some olive oil, okay? And a little bit of olive oil and a little bit of salt. Okay, let me check on these, make sure that they're not getting too dark. Okay, so this is good for the first fry, if you notice that they're nice and um, brown. Okay, so those are nice and brown. So I'm just going to leave these here for a moment while we finish up the sauce, um, and then we're going to flatten them out. Okay, it should be pretty smart. All right, so in our pilong, we are going to wait. Well, I have three peppercorns. If you use more, it'll you definitely taste it. You don't want it too, um, you don't want it too uh, uh, peppery. So I'm gonna use about eight garlic cloves for this. Now this is the part where you have to like really use your muscles and just mash away. Okay, so this is when you really gotta get into it. You got some aggression you want to let out. This is the perfect thing to do. You want to make sure that you get those peppers, those peppercorns, and all of the garlic. 
nice and chopped. Man, really good. So to see if you notice, that's how it's going to start to look, and you're going to keep doing that until you get the majority of it nice and smashed. All right. Are we? Okay, so I see the video, so it should be so long. Okay, so this is nice and um and smashed right now. So we should be good. Okay. So the next thing that we're going to do is once you get all of this together, what you don't want is to keep smashing because once you add the liquid, all that liquid is just gonna splash up on you. Trust me, I know because I've done it. <laughs> so you just wanna make sure that um that you do and get rid of all of any pieces that you see that need to be smashed up already done. Okay. So scrape up all the rest of And this is the perfect um, time, you know, to, to do this because, of course, you, you're you waiting for your rice to cook, you're waiting for your meat to cook, and you have to cook down and get all nice and delicious. So um, it just gives you more time to do all the other things. You know, check on the kids, make sure that they got a, you know, got a cookie or, you know, they want some ice cream. Or something like but anyway, okay. So now we're going to add a little bit of salt. There's about a teaspoon of salt. Oh, that's too much. Okay. So you add your salt, mix it in all nice. All right. You're going to add your rice wine vinegar. This is about a quarter of a cup of your rice wine vinegar. Okay, you opened for me before. Okay, that's about a quarter of a cup. And then you want a half a cup of your olive oil. Olive oil on here. All right, then you're going to add just a little bit of olive oil. Of course, this is also taste, like I said, you know, if you want it, if you want it to have a little bit more of that adobo um, taste to it, you definitely can add more, um, you know, so based on what your preference is. So pretty much you're just mixing everything together. This is your, um, this is your ajo sauce or your sauce. So that's pretty much what it's gonna look like. Let me grab my little tin ramekin here and then you'll be able to see it more better. See that? All right, so you're supposed to good to go. All right, so now let's get to smashing some sotones, right? Okay. Oh, you know what I forgot? I forgot to add the cilantro. Oh my God. Silly me. See, I think I'm going a little bit too fast, y'all. I think I need to chill. See, I said I get in my little tunnel. I forgot. I'm going to pour this back in. Then I'm going to add my cilantro. The cilantro is always at the end of it. Then you mix it up again. Not bad. If you don't like cilantro, you don't have to add it. You know, this is just, um, you know, how we do it. You know, my better half loves cilantro. So. Okay. All right. Let's check on our rice. Then we're going to smash some, some totones. Now for the totones, 
you can do one or two things to smash it. You can use the bottom of a plate, make sure that it's flat. I use I use this. This is um I use this for pretty much everything at this point. But this I could use to um yeah to sear. But it's also good because I make kibarito, so I need something big to smash down. So I use this or this little mallet. This is a tenderizer on one side, but then the mallet comes in really handy when I'm making the funnels and I just snap them really quick. Or you could use the bottom of a jar like this, as long as it's flat and it's in, or even the back, I've seen people use the back of a pan. So either way, either one of those things will work. Okay, so let's get our phone in. Oh my God, it's smelling so good in here. All I had was some toast and coffee this morning. So I think I'm gonna have to make myself a plate. Okay, so now we're going to smash these. So remember, we're going to fry these twice. So this is going to be the second time that we're going to fry these. Okay, so now when you do this, whatever it is that you use, make sure that you oil the bottom of um, whatever you're going to smash with because it'll end up. Uh, you see, it happens. Because <laughs> it'll end up. Um, uh, sticking to the bottom. So you want to make sure that you oil the bottom as best as you can. See, that's what happens when you have big hips that start bumping into everything. Okay, so we're going to take our on in and we're just going to smash. You see? How it smash, how, how it comes out nice and flat. All right. Wow. That's fabulous. Huh? That's fabulous. <laughs> Thank you. You're making me hungry. I have to go upstairs and get some food. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I still got to have some, some of your barbecue. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. You know, we, we have to do that once um, we get this quarantine lifted a little bit, huh? Yeah. When COVID is over, definitely, we're going to have to have some sort of um, potluck, you know? Oh, that'd be wonderful. Yeah. yeah. You're, looking, you're looking like you need a TV show. <laughs> okay, so let's check on the meat. Make sure I'm going to need um, another, since I dropped all that on the floor. Um, no problem. I got that though. All right. Look at this fabulousness, y'all. Look at this. Ozzy, so it's okay that the steak is kind of soupy? Wait, I can't, let me put my other thing on that I can't hear you. What did you say? It's cookie. Um, it's, so it's okay that the that the pepper steak is a little soupy? Um, yeah, it's okay. Because you're gonna, you, you want that sauce. You want the sauce and you want it to um, put it over the rice. So it oh, makes a little soupy, it's fine. Yeah. Okay, cool. Thank you. It smells amazing in my mm -hmm. kitchen. I'm trying to keep my husband out of the kitchen. Man, it's smelling good in here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yes, yeah, so, so this is this is almost done. Um we're gonna check on the rice now. Okay, at this point what you could do is with your with your meat, you wanna turn it down. So just turn it down and just let it um just simmer. I'll put this right here. All right, let's check on this right. Um, need another spoon. Okay. All right. Oh, me like that. Oh, look at this right here. Let me get uh. Oh my God, delicious. Oh. <laughs> Look at this rice, y'all. I just want to get a bowl. <laughs> that is what I'm talking about. See that? So you see how when I told you that the that the meat was just the was just about done and the rice took just about the same amount of time. So this this rice is done. 
That can be done. Yeah, so I'm going to shut it off. I'm going to shut it off and I'm just going to let it rest there because now what we are going to do is do the second fry on a photone. Uh huh, yeah. <laughs> We're gonna do the second fry in our patones and then we're gonna plate. Okay? And I'm gonna try and plate it as 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 the picture that I sent and y'all all have. I'm gonna try and plate it as, as perfect to that as I can. All right. So we have our patones that are ready for their second fry, so that's what we're gonna do now. Okay. So again, make sure that your temperature is at 350. All right, and this is only going to take um, not even five minutes to fry. Because remember, they're already partially cooked. All you want to do is just fry them until they get to a nice, uh, a nice golden brown. You see where the white part is? You want them to get nice and golden brown. All right. So that I make, I'm, uh, uh, I'm happy that I made everybody hungry. <laughs> I already had one person ask, yo, what you gonna do with all that food since you're gonna be making it tomorrow? I was like, uh, okay, I guess uh, I could sell the place. <laughs> of course, that's everybody in the family eats. I'm gonna take this off. Okay, so a few minutes. Why? Yep, these are just about done. If you want to take a look. See? See how they're all nice and brown now? All right. So the one thing that you want to do is uh, when you take these out of the fire, you want to quickly salt them. So, you know, so you can have some salt. See, and my food stuff is already ready to salt. <laughs> Thank you. So you just want to lightly salt, toss it in the salt a little bit. All right. Okay. So now here's the time where we go plate everything. So I'm going to try and make it just like the picture. Okay. All right. So I got my nice little pretty white plate. Let me get some of these things out of my way. Okay. All right. So I am going to use, I'm going to use one of this to do that. Take some of my rice. I'm going to put it in here. You could use any kind of mold you have. It could be a small, um, you know, it could be a small bowl. I'm using one of our plastic um, containers. I should have sprayed it first. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Walwin says I should have sprayed the container first so that, it, so that the rice wouldn't stick. So I should try it again. So let me do it again. All right, that's okay. You know I'm gonna eat that bowl of rice. Okay. Oh my goodness. It's amazing. Food always makes people happy. That's why I, that's why I always love to cook. So I remember and my grandmother when she would cook. And then I would see my aunt and uncle, you know, just happy because of something that she made. So, of course. All right. So now to make sure that it stays molded, what to do is, you know, you're going to have to do a little flip and invert. So if you do that, look at that. 
perfect, right? Okay. So then now we're going to take some of our pepper seeds. Yummy, yummy. Okay. Let's up the tongue out first. And you take some of that gravy. Big cookie, having the gravy is perfect. My cookie was perfect. All right? Just clean off this plate a little bit. All right. Now you have your totone. You're going to just Wait, get the Tony. You don't have to give all, you know, this is just one, one plantain. You don't have to put them one on one plate, but I'm just doing it. Then you have your ajo plus. Now, I mean, if you want to be fancy, that's fine. That's why I chopped up a little bit extra of the cilantro. And just sprinkle it. And there you have it. Beautiful. <laughs> All right. Anybody have any questions? What you know? Um, I hope everybody uh follow me pretty well. Well, I can't hear anybody, so I don't know if this. No? Yes, if you're hungry, you want to eat? <laughs> uh, Josie, can you hear me? I can hear you now, yes. Uh, so uh, based on your recipe, how many um, servings, how many people does it serve? Um, it, this will, this will serve about four people. Four people. Yes. Okay. I, I hit something. What did I do? Uh -oh. Your camera, your video, you got to put it back on. Oh, okay. So it's okay. Okay. There, there go. we go. I'm sorry about that. I grabbed my phone. And... Yeah. This, um, this recipe will feed four people. Nice portion for people. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and this is uh, yeah, this is my better half. This is Walwyn. He he was our camera guy and my sister yeah. for the day. Awesome. And he's also uh, you know co armor so we both set it up in here all the time. So, um, okay, so is there any any other questions? Anybody? Um, okay, let me know how, you know, let me know how it tastes. I want to hear. Who, um, who cooked them alongside me? I want to know how did it come out? Where can you order food? Yes, um, you can order food um, directly to me. You can call or text. Um, our, um, I have my website and then also on my Facebook page is Elvita Cocina. I'm also on Instagram and Twitter. Um, you can call here 347-724-0451 and place your order. This is my food truck, um, food truck menu. Um, and yeah, feel free to give me a call and place your order. Thank <laughs> you.
Hi, everyone. I'm Angel Morales Patterson. I'm the Director of Operations and uh, I'm partnership for the Office of Multicultural Advancement. Thanks again to everyone who was able to join us this afternoon. A huge thanks to Josie. I've known Josie for years uh, for such an amazing cooking demonstration for us tonight. Today, I know everyone will enjoy dinner tonight. I know I will. I'm hungry right now. I probably have to order some food from Josie. Um, please look out for um, Shades of Orange that's coming out on June 4th. And you will see a list of events that will be occur, virtual events that will be occurring in June. So please look out for Shades of Orange. If you don't get Shades of Orange, please send an email to suma at syr.edu so we can put, add you to the list. Thanks again for your time and enjoy the rest of your evening. Goodbye.